like to share the words of Auntie So Diana. is it is it correct to say that you have certain traditional and cultural gifts that have been passed down to your genealogical lines? Yes. Does this include a gift of a haka, a seer, a medium? Yes. And is that what it's referred to in your written direct testimony on page two? Yes. And so it's, it's, it's established in Hawaiian traditional accounts that this type of gift, being a haka, is a traditional gift. Is yes. that correct? And through this gift, you receive iki kupuna, or ancestral insight. Is that correct? Yes. Do, as a cultural practitioner and one with this gift, does it matter how many years you've been on the mountain to have and receive information? No. And so you are able to go to certain places, on not just on the Mauna, but other places, and you can receive certain information about the significance of that place. Is that correct? Yes. And, they can, and, and through this Ike Kupuna, ancestral insight, they can, they can tell you what happened at these places long ago. Is that correct? Yes. So I'm going to take you back, ha having to do with this gift, and a time that you're in a ceremony at the proposed TMT site. And as you recall, the ceremony was to ask forgiveness for what had happened there. Is that, do you recall that particular incident? Yes. And at that particular period of time, there was a, the land had been bulldozed down. Uh, the road has been graded larger. I believe this goes back to 2013. Mm -hmm. The land was bulldozed down, the road, I should say. And a new road was cut in a, a loop area. And they did this geotechnical drilling. At that time, we were in a very deep pule, very deep prayer in our ceremony, asking for this forgiveness for what has been done up on the mountain. And I became incorporated as a medium with a spirit of the mountain that was hurt by all of the, the desecration happening on the Mauna. And oftentimes when I am incorporated with the spirit, I can feel what the spirit is feeling in my actual physical body. And there was an immense pain and a cry for help, for acknowledgement of what happened that there needed to be more mihi onto the land. And so the spirit didn't want to leave my body and kept on asking and pleading for, for healing um, because there was so much anger and so much pain and so much trauma and I was incorporated with the spirit for a very long time. And it, it is, took oh, sorry. many, many chants and many prayers um, for the spirit to finally leave my body. And was it in part because the drilling had, had this drilling had gone six feet or so feet into the mountain and this particular sensitive area? Yes. And it had punctured certain aspects into the mountain? Yes. And what, and what, and when you said you were incorporated, was the spirit wanted to take you for that? Yes. Was it gonna take you for the action that had happened? Yes, the spirit wanted to take my life for that action. And then, I know you were incapacitated to a certain extent, but do you recall who else was there in general? I mean, we have family members and, yes. and other cultural practitioners were there. Yes. And then we were able to, through ceremony and prayer, to in, extract that 
entity from you so yes. that you could come back, right? Yes. And then it was recalled to you that we might have lost you at that time? Yes. So even with all that had happened, and even with the pain you you inquired, do you feel that it was better that it happened to you or to, versus to someone else? Yes. Would it have been better to happen to you or to the construction workers who were working on the equipment at that time? Yes. It would be better to happen to you than perhaps a dole care officer was up, that might have been up there. Yes. Or a ranger that would have been up there. Yes. Or anyone else not knowing walking to that area, would it, it's better to happen to you. Yes. And is it because there are people there with you that could remedy the situation, is that true? Yes. That if, if there weren't cultural practitioners there who knew how, who had the experience to deal with this, and that if it happened to someone else unknowingly, that it would be a different situation. Yes. Thank you. And it was at this place and point that a Pohaku was, actually more than one Pohaku was set up, yes. to, in essence, to honor that spirit in, in this ceremony. Yes. And in the honor of the spirit, it was, when you say that we say a spirit, is, is it more than just, a, how, could you, how would you describe this entity? An immense, powerful spirit of the mountain. That's how I would describe this entity. Okay. And that would be different than other spirits you may have encountered, right? Yes, because some of the spirits that I encounter are human. And this was a spirit of a land base. And when you say human, you're referring to like a human spirit that was disincarnated. Yes. That, not, that, not with, that have since passed. So there, there are other types of spirits you have encountered. Yes. Throughout, throughout your lifetime, right? So, we, so, so that was one incident that, that you had experienced there. And unfortunate that you're here still with us today. But there have been other incidents, if you, I mean, other iki kupuna that you received in this area on the northern plateau. Is that correct? Yes. And some of the iki kupuna, this ancestral insight, shared with you the significance of all these, I mean, I say all, but of the many Ahua shrines on the northern plateau. Is that correct? Yes. And some of these shrines are within this area of the proposed DMT site. Is that correct? Yes. And what was the significance of some of these Ahus or shrines in this area as it was told to you? The way it was shown to me in a vision when we were in prayer up there on the northern plateau was that many of these shrines are energetically connected to one another as a portal to the celestial bodies of the universe. And that this place in particular was a place of, of learning the celestial realm and the cosmos and also connected to voyaging. And so it's a very sacred space of higher learning, spiritual learning, higher consciousness. And that was what I was shown. And we also shown that there are, what do you say, in kupunas of the past, like pre-contact kupuna, they used to come up yes. and connect with these shrines. Is that yes. correct? And some of them built some of these shrines. Yes. And these ahus. Yes. And there's certain families, not necessarily all families, but there are certain families who had kuleana to take care of these places. Is that correct? Yes. And when you, and this similar type of message that you receive, were there others that received similar messages as such? Yes. And we, we, there's others who have received this other iki kupuna. Is that yes. correct? Besides yourself? Yes. And is it and, a, and part of this iki kupuna that was shared with you? Is it true that this knowledge is actually embedded into the into the site? Is that correct? Yes. And could you explain further what that re, what that means? That the knowledge from these ancient beings of the celestial realm and of the kupuna realm are 
in the fabric of the mountain. They're, they are a part of the portal that exists there. They're not separate. And so these shrines, these pohaku, these ahu, are directly connected to all of these ancestral beings that come through, through the visions, through the mediumship. And they all are interconnected energetically through vibrations. They're interconnected through the connection to the star realm and to the earth realm. And there's no degree of separation between them. And many of these shrines and sites are interconnected, is that correct? Yes. And so if you destroy one particular sh site or ahu, you, have, you potentially are causing a disruption for the other interconnected yes. sites, is that correct? Yes. As was told to you. And so with the proposed TMT project, where it's being proposed to be built, would it cause a destruction to some of these sites? Yes. And what is the impact to that, mm -hmm. to this, to these sites and to this knowledge? As I was told from the spirit realm, that this knowledge right now is available to be accessed. That right now, this knowledge is here for us, like it was here for our kupuna. But if that particular place is desecrated, if the TMT would be built there, then that access to the knowledge, to the celestial realms, to the interconnectedness of the Ahu, to us and our ceremony would be severed. And we mean severed, you, you state in your written direct testimony that access to this ancient school of celestial knowledge would be severed permanently. Permanently, we would no longer be able to access it. 